Block 44, the Tunisian sampler afghan, is the bicolor squares block. It's actually block 50 in the leaflet. All of these blocks are based on Leisure Arts leaflet number 2501, an afghan stitch sampler. Uh, the leaflet is available for PDF download. It's no longer in print. Uh, the price, I believe, currently is $9.99, but I will say they constantly put their PDF patterns on sale. So it's one of those you kind of just need to check back with them. Um, the best way to find the pamphlet, if you're looking for it, is to just Google Leisure Arts 2501 and click on the link that is directly to leisurearts.com and it takes you straight to the pattern. This, this particular block, the bicolor squares block, the pattern is derived strictly from changing colors of yarn. Uh, it's all the simple stitch or afghan stitch. And you basically change, I think according to the pattern, it's every five stitches. You do three rows, every five stitches you change the colors, you alternate them. Um, because I'm doing 36 stitches in my blocks, I'm doing it every six stitches. So uh, all I'm really going to do here is show you how, to, how and when to change colors. And in the first half of the row, you match the yarn that you're using to the loop that you're picking up. So here is when I change because I want my loop to be the coral color I changed. Now this is the end of the block, and I am, as I've shown in previous blocks, I'm doing my vertical sashing and then connecting to the previous column as I create each block. So now I'm changing the color to the off-white yarn for my vertical sashing. Now I'm going to go into the back loop and this purple loop. I can do both at the same time. And now I'm going to yarn over and draw through two all the way across. And I switch colors as soon as I get to the point that I have two different colors to draw through. I'm going to change to the color that's the s of the second loop on the hook. Okay, I've got two different colors. Time to change to yellow. You get the idea here. Time to change to the coral. Now, I'm not going to finish going all the way across the row. But after I've got, this is like the second row in this series, after I've done the third series of this, when I get down to these last two stitches, that's when I'm going to pull through my coral yarn so that my first stitch of the next row on top will be coral. On the back here, well, you'll see there's a lot of color changing going on, and so you're going to have a lot of threads to bury. Each time I change colors, I leave a generous length on there because I'm going to use a needle to bury them, and I will be doing a video on that, on burying threads later. I have used 
um, yarn bobbins here and I've got six of them, three for the yellow, three for the coral. I highly recommend you using the bobbins and use six of them. The reason being the pattern itself tells you to just do two balls of each color and then use your the remainder of your skein for the third color on there. I'm here to tell you if you go balls of yarn versus using the bobbins you're going to drive yourself bonkers trying to keep those separated because as you move those balls of yarn are going to unwind and they're going to be going left right and everywhere and if you have a cat forget it you're going to lose. Um, I know that when I'm just working with one ball of yarn as soon as I move I get up I go to answer the phone go to get a drink whatever that ball goes running away from me so uh, I would suggest using the bobbins I think that's basically it um, because I'm using the 36 stitches again mine are going to be six stitches wide versus the five called for in the pattern and I'm doing 29 rows and since these are in series of three rows I'm doing one row of plain coral on the bottom and one row of plain coral on the top and then uh, a series of nine of these three stitch rows for the other 27 rows and that's it block number 44 the bicolor squares thanks for watching